Hi, I'm Matt Pitts with Fahrenheit Technologies. We'll be demonstrating a full system cleanout. This cleanout will be broken down into two different part videos. Part one, we'll be doing the heat exchanger maintenance. We'll start out by ensuring your plug is connected to a live outlet. Go to your control panel, cycle down to maintenance. Select either plate control or pusher control. Press enter twice. This is going to initiate the exhaust blower to turn on, which is going to help reduce some of the particles going into your home or installed area for the furnace. Next, we're going to remove the air deflector by taking off the two left and two right screws. This will expose the heat exchanger cover plate and the gasket, so go ahead and remove those four screws as well. Take a look at your gasket, ensuring there's no rips or tears. On this enlarged surface, there will be quite a bit of debris built up, so using a putty knife, carefully scrape that debris off. Looking inside of the top of the heat exchanger, you'll see the top of the 18 tubes, as well as the very top of the machine. The top of the machine will get quite a bit of debris built up, so utilizing a scraper tool, Clean that area as best you can, also ensuring you get the sides. Based on the amount of debris, it will fall in between the tubes up top, so help guide some of that debris down towards the lower section. Finishing up by utilizing your scraper rod. You should hear metal on the back positioning, as well as the forward positioning. Go ahead and reinstall your cover plate, ensuring your gasket gets a proper seal. You should see nice compression between your, your plate, your gasket, and the heat exchanger. Next, go ahead and install your top air deflector. Next, we're going to check the gasket seals on both the fire door and the ash pan. Utilizing a long neck grill lighter running the flame around the entire perimeter of the gasket, going all the way around, as well as the ash pan. To simulate a leak, I'm gonna crack the door handle open, and you'll see that flame draw inward, anywhere a leak is present. Same thing with the lower ash pan. You'll see that flame draw inward. With the ash pan gaskets, replace as necessary with the fire door. Unless your gasket is too dry rotted, you can go through and pinch it to help bring some of the life back. Or you can utilize the positioning on the latch point by loosening these two bolts with a 5 16 socket or wrench, bringing that latch point inward towards the heat exchanger. Next we're going to remove our upper baffle plates by pushing up, sliding back, and then dropping down. There will be quite a bit of debris built up on these plates, so I tend to drop them towards the back of the machine. While they're in the upright position like this, you can scrape them with your putty knife to kind of get some of that loose debris to fall off before completely removing them, flip them upside down and get to the, the debris that builds up from being directly over top of the fire. Next, using a, a putty knife, scrape the walls of the heat exchanger. Ensuring you get the crevice on the far right hand side leads all the way down towards the ash pan, as well as on the left hand side that also leads all the way down towards the ash pan. Scrape all the walls, front, back, sides, everything you can get. Next we're going to remove the burn pot and inspect the pieces, clean the pieces as you remove them. ensuring all the portholes on all the components are nice and clean. Should there be too much debris buildup inside of the ports, 
this could in turn cause those components to overheat, which is gonna reduce the lifetime of those, those individual pieces. With a pusher assembly, you wanna keep in mind this lower section is gonna get the most debris buildup as this is pushing forward and a lot of the debris actually kind of gets packed in those bottom ports. Same thing with the back side of here. Lower section is gonna be commonly packed full of ash as this also gets some of that ash being pushed up against this. Got your side ports here and then your bottom ports. This area right here should be very well kept clean because if it's not, this will reduce the lifetime of the igniter. Same thing on the right side. The igniter is not in this area, so again, it's cr critical to keep it clean, but it's not as critical as the left hand side. This will expose the bottom of the burn pot housing. Once you go through and scrape the side walls of the heat exchanger, utilize a vacuum to suck out any debris that builds up in this lower compartment. Also ensuring that you clean out the tip of the igniter only because it'll, again, help reduce the airflow restriction, which will give you more lifetime on your igniter. Should your burn pot components not easily be removed, you can always go through the maintenance sequence and slightly jog them forward to re relieve some of the tension from the flapper door, as well as get that top relay plate out a little bit more for easier removal. Moving on to the lower section. Remove your ash pan. Again, check all the gaskets all the way around just to make sure all the gaskets are sealing to the other gaskets. In other words, there's no gap between the points. Also going through, making sure you clean up as much debris as you can with your putty knife. Using a half inch wide piece of banding strap, or plumber's tape, feed it up through that back channel, which you should be able to see by where those top baffles are. Keeping in mind you can only get up to the left hand side of the auger tube because it's basically being fed right through the back wall. Be sure to shift it side to side as you feed it in and out. One last section you're able to access. You got about a three quarter inch to a one inch gap on the far right hand side. Also, going all the way up to the heat exchanger tubes. Next, utilizing the same scraper tool, scrape your lower exhaust assembly. And then finish up by cleaning the rest of this lower compartment with your ash vac. This concludes the heat exchanger maintenance. Should you need any replacement gaskets, contact your local dealer or contact us through our FahrenheitTech.com website through the contact link. Thank you for watching.